I want you to imagine yourself walking down the street. You're alone. You look to your right and you see a small child who's also alone. They're bending over to pick up a large knife. Are you the type of person that would go and intervene and take the knife away from the kid? Or is that none of your business? Like, no one's going to know if anything happens. Now, I want you to imagine this kid. Out in the Democratic Republic of Congo, also all alone, sorting through minerals from a water flow with his bare hands. A second child, this one with a gun, comes over and yells at him to get into a cave because he's the only one small enough to fit in it. While in the cave, the child moved one rock the wrong way. The cave collapses and the child dies. The kid with the gun then yells at the next kid to get into the next cave. What are your reactions to that? That's awful. We don't want to, people don't want to hear about that. That has nothing to do with me. Let's just avoid it altogether. It does have something to do with you. Both your and my consumer demand for things like this, that I'm betting we all have in our back pockets right now, has caused kids like him and so many other of the Congolese people to die. Why? Complex minerals. Tin, tantalum, tungsten, and gold. In your phone, tin is used as a solder for the circuits. Tantalum to store power in tungsten is what makes it vibrate, and gold as a conductor. They're found everywhere. Not only in your smartphones and your smartwatches, your tablets, your computers, anything with a lithium ion battery. What exactly makes them complex minerals? What exactly is the conflict? Well, other than the fact that these people are dying in the child labor abuse, complex minerals are the single source for sexual violence, insecurity, human rights abuse, poverty, war, and crime in the Democratic Republic of Congo. What happens is these rebel groups come in with their guns. They raid the villages. They take the men and the small children to force them to work. Then, leaving the women alone, they then rape them. The women are then left pregnant, alone, without the access to nutrition or medical care that they need. So you may ask, what about those products that are conflict-free or re-conflict-free on the labels? Yes, there are those products. In fact, Australia has been a born producer of <coughs> in the world. The problem is the supply chain and how the minerals get to your phone. What happens is places like Australia and the Democratic Republic Democratic Republic of Congo send all their minerals to the same places. They send them to smelting companies in places like India and China, and there, they're all mixed together. And then companies buy from them, not knowing where the minerals that they bought have come from. In 2010, the U.S. passed a bill stating that everybody, every big company needs to state on their product if it's conflict-free or not. This is an amazing first step. But you, both you and me as consumers need to make, needs to take more steps. We need to be recycling our electronics that we already have when we're finished with them. And by recycling, I don't mean turning it into your cell phone company to get a discount on your next upgrade, because who knows where it goes from there. We need to actually be doing our research and figuring out where our stuff is going. We need to be buying conflict-free. We need to be decreasing the demand for the products in the first place. And we need to be putting pressure on these big companies that are not supporting this cause. We need to be contacting them, emailing them, telling them that we want conflict free. We need to be decreasing the demand in total. Don't upgrade every two years just because you want the latest and greatest technology. Because people are dying. It's your my business because we're a part of it. So why isn't anyone doing anything? We need to be doing something about it, and we need to be educating others to do the same. Thanks.